Imolk is just around the corner. So I wanted to show you how I made a Bridget's Cross out of a non-traditional material. It's something you can find in any craft store or even the craft section at any discount store. It's raffia. If you don't have the appropriate natural materials to craft a Bridget's Cross growing in your area, then you'll love this budget-friendly city life hack for making a Bridget's Cross for your Emilk altar. Coming up next. Welcome to the Witch's Studio. I am, of course, Mickey Mueller, author, illustrator, and witch. Not necessarily in that order. And I'm so glad to welcome you to my studio for some witchy fun. I've got spells, witchy crafts, meditations, and more on my channel. So if that's what you're into, you should definitely hit that subscribe button. That way you'll always find your way back to my Witch's Studio anytime. I'm always glad to have you here. Now, before we get started, I have a really beautiful live Zoom event coming up on Monday, February 6, 2023, with Marissa Catrill, who has the All My Ancestors channel on YouTube. Here's the link to her channel. Marissa invited me to be her guest speaker for the February full moon in Leo ceremony. The ceremony will be hosted on Zoom and there is an entry fee of $15. We'll begin at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, so don't forget to adjust your time zone. Marissa will cover the astrology and some shadow work and I will lead everyone through a meditation and ritual working with the energy of the Rowan tree to create a divinely protected safe space to access self-love. Her ceremonies are so beautiful. You can see some of the past ones over on her channel. I hope you can join us and participate in this moving full moon ceremony. The link and more information and to register is going to be in the description below. Imolk is the halfway point between the winter solstice and the spring equinox, of course. And it's also the goddess Bridget's feast day coming up on February 2nd. I'm delighted to share a traditional Imolk craft with you that's created in a somewhat non-traditional way. Bridget's crosses are usually made with either rushes, which is a thick stalked grass that loves to grow in the Irish wetlands, or made with straw. I haven't found rushes growing near me and I also don't have any straw. So I decided to use what I have on hand, which is how I kind of live my witchcraft journey anyway. I found a big bag of raffia in my closet and since I made one this way last year. I thought it would be nice to share it with you too. There are lots of great videos on how to make them out of rushes, pipe cleaners, and even drinking straws. I'll share a couple of those videos in the description below. But if you don't have access to rushes and you still want your Bridget's Cross to be made out of natural materials, this is a pretty decent substitute. These crosses are traditional and were made all over Ireland to celebrate, yes, St. Bridget's Day, but the charms go back to pre-Christian celebrations of Imolk and the goddess Bridget. Some people would bring Bridget's crosses to their parish priest to be blessed. Some priests would quietly go ahead and do it, but some would refuse because of the pagan origins of these charms. Give this video a thumbs up for all the people who kept these traditions going so that we still have them today. In the oldest traditions, these woven folk pieces of art would be created on February 1st and left outside to collect Bridget's blessings. Then it would be hung from the rafters on February 2nd and stay there all year to bless the home and those living there, as well as to offer protection, especially from fire and from illness. A new one would be created every year. The old one could be placed inside the thatch or could be burned or buried depending on the county that you lived in or your family tradition. The style of the crosses can also vary depending on the county it's from. In the early 1940s, Bridget's crosses were gathered from all over Ireland by the Irish Folklore Commission and donated to the National Museum of Ireland. The styles made varied by region and were made out of rushes, wood, even fabric. 
So changing up the materials to what you have available is actually traditional too, if you want to look at it that way. Raffia is usually made from the fiber of the raffia palm. It's a natural material. So even though it's a different way of making a Bridget's Cross, I think the results are really pretty and still have that folk art charm. So let's go make one. When I do my witch crafting, I really like to set the energy and have sacred space to work in. I also like to have some good references. Here I grabbed my copy of Imolk by Carl F. Neal. And here's a close-up of the one that I made last year that I'm going to try to duplicate here. The Imolk book is part of the Llewellyn's Sabbath's Essential series. And I illustrated all of those, so I knew I had a good illustration of how to make these. I also grabbed my copy of Tending Bridget's Flame by my friend Lunea Weatherstone. She has a beautiful blessing in there and step-by-step -step instructions for a pipe cleaner version, which is much easier to make. So if you've never tried it before, you might even want to experiment with that first. The raffia that I bought had some natural bends in it. So I cut the pieces to use and take advantage of the natural bends that are already in the raffia. I also chose pieces that were as close to the same width as I could and really the heavier pieces are better. For the first piece I used, I tried to find one that wasn't very bent and I also had these little hair clips on hand and you'll see why in a bit. Traditionally, you don't really need clips, but the raffia is much softer so you kind of sometimes need a little something extra to hold them in place. So holding the middle one vertically, you grab the first piece and you just put it on starting from the left hand side over to the right. And then the next piece goes from the top to the bottom and goes right over the top of the last one that you just placed. And you really need to hold those center pieces together. That is what helps hold the whole thing together is keeping hold of that center piece. And then the next piece is going to go from right to left. And now you have kind of that cross shape, as you can see. From this point on, we'll be rotating the cross as we go. Rotate it, grab another piece, put it on. Hold it really tight. <laughs> Rotate it, grab another piece, and put it on. And we just proceed in this way, adding more and more pieces as we go. When these crosses are made with the traditional rushes or with straw, they kind of tend to hold their place a little bit easier than this raffia does. It really needs a lot of adjusting as you go, just to kind of keep everything going in the direction that it needs to be. I actually spent more time adjusting this than I did weaving it. I've also seen places where people say, well, you're supposed to use nine. Uh, but I've also seen lots of people who have made much bigger and thicker ones that are obviously using more than nine reeds, and that's okay too, because again, these were made differently depending on the traditions of the families or the county that you lived in. So as I go, as you can see, uh, because the raffia isn't as stiff as uh, rushes would be, they really kind of get out of hand, and that's what I use the clips for, because as I'm going, I really needed those clips to kind of hold everything in place so that I could get it all adjusted the way I needed. And then if you decide you're still going to add some more pieces and you have the clips on, you can literally put the piece on like this and then you can undo the clip and then clip it back on. These clips are pretty easy to operate with one hand because you just kind of bend them into place. So that worked fairly well. And now I'm gonna do some further adjusting and finish it off. You pull the last one that you placed out like that, and then you grab the other one. And as this goes on, rather than going around the outside of it, it's gonna go through the bend in that last one. And that helps to lock the whole thing together. Again, if this were a reed one, it would lock it together much easier, but because we're using raffia, it tends to be a little loosey-goosey, so I'm going to keep those clips on until I tie the ends off, and you'll see what I mean in a minute here. 
And what I'm really doing here is making sure that all of them are good and tight and that everything is aligned properly and is in a pretty decent square there in the center. And I feel like that's about as good as we're gonna get, so I'm happy with that. Now I'm gonna grab some really thin pieces of raffia and I'm gonna tie off all four of the arms. And I like to just tie them in three knots. You can also use string to do this if you prefer the look of it. Still adjusting. <laughs> And once I've tied them all, they'll be much tighter and they'll stay tighter. And I'm just trimming the little ends off of the tie. You'll want to leave the ends on one of the ties to make a hanger with, and you'll see that shortly too. So I'm adjusting and tying as I go. Just try to make sure everything is nice and as aligned as it can be and that all the little raffia pieces are in there as tight as they can be. With every arm that I tie, it becomes more and more stable, and that's one of the reasons I like to adjust a little bit as I go. You can kind of see one of those pieces there at the bottom that you can see right there is a little wider than I probably would have liked it to be. I probably should have chosen a different piece of raffia, but I'm certainly not going to redo it at this point. And now I'm going to grab my little scissors and I'm just going to cut the ends off of all of the arms. On that section there, I want to be really careful to pull the little ties down so I don't cut them because that is going to become my hanger. And I just tie those two little pieces together up at the top and it makes a nice little hanger. And there it is. I'm really pretty happy with how this came out. I decided that I wanted to charge it with the intention to receive Bridget's blessings on Imolk Night. So I'm going to do that using this beautiful incantation from Tending Bridget's Flame by Lunea Weatherstone. It's on page 25 if you have that book. Otherwise, I will put it down in the description below. I call for the encircling of Bridget, protect the house and all within, protect the house from beam to wall, protect the house and the household all, the roof and the floor and all between. And now I will set that out on my porch to receive her blessings and I will hang it in my house all year long. Have you ever made one or do you think you'll try it this year? I do think I'll keep trying to keep my eye out for some suitable natural materials growing in my area, and then try my hand at a different style next year. So also, I really want to stress that it's okay if yours isn't picture perfect. This is the one that I made that you saw in the video, but this is the one that I made last year, which I actually think looks kind of better than that one. But before I made the one that you saw, I made a different one that turned out kind of um, not as nice, but honestly, it's still not terrible. Try it, and as you learn to work with the raffia, you'll end up getting one that looks pretty decent. I was, like I said, I was pretty happy with the results of mine, and now I have three. If you have witchy friends who would like to give this craft a try, please feel free to share this video with them. They'll be glad that you did. And if you haven't already, make sure that you're subscribed and cast a spell on the notification bell so that you'll magically know as soon as I upload a new video. Don't forget, if you're interested in more information or to register for the live Zoom full moon ceremony coming up on Monday, February 6th, Marissa Catrill's link to the event is down below in the description. I hope that I see you there. 
Thanks again for visiting me here. I have a few more videos here that I think you might enjoy. I will see you next time. Until then, stay safe, happy, and healthy, and remember, as always, to be your magic. Bye, everybody. Oh, yeah, and you might have noticed I, I cut my hair. <laughs> I cut the bangs and did layers and everything myself. Um, it was kind of brave, and it turned out pretty good, so... <laughs> Anyway, that happened. See you next time. Bye.